hello to everybody on the webinar and on Facebook. Thank you all for joining. Uh, we want to welcome you to Office Equipment 101. 101. Um, if you'll, if you're joining from Zoom, you can look at the the bar on the bottom of your screen that includes the Q and A or the chat. So if you have any questions along the presentation, you can enter in your questions there. If you're joining from Facebook, feel free to add comments on the Facebook Live and we'll see them there as well. But today we're going to be talking about Office Equipment 101 consumer, consumer versus professional grade. Your presenters today are Will Nobles, who's the founder and CEO of Vector Choice, and Dave Collier, who's one of the partners at Atlanta Office Technologies. So I'm going to let this short video introduce Will. With over 20 years experience in the technology field, serving Fortune 500 and small companies alike, he holds two degrees and multiple certifications. Cybersecurity expert. Will Nobles. Boy, has he had success in his life. Since I've started my company, I've dedicated myself in helping my clients protect the integrity of their data. The CEO of Vector Choice Technology Solutions. Please welcome Mr. Will Nobles. People don't get the risk that's out there. Don't be careless with your technology. Your employees are your number one security risk that you have. So when it clicks on the link, it spreads across the network and encrypts the data on that network. When we're sitting down with a client for the first time, one of the things we're looking at is what are they doing today to protect yourself against cyber attacks? Just because you're a small firm or you don't have a lot of money, don't think that someone's not trying to hack you. Everybody is vulnerable. We can do dark, go into the dark web, look and see of your employees um, what passwords are out there. What we do is partner humanity with technology. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together and welcome Mr. Will Noble. All right, I'm going to turn it over to you guys. Hey guys, uh, thank you for joining Facebook and here on the webinar, the Zoom webinar. Thank you so much for joining. Um, yes, I do not have my blue suit on today. I decided just to go with my Vector shirt. Uh, so I, I am sorry if I disappointed you guys for being on a webinar and on TV without having the blue suit on. But I wanted to introduce, for the ones that don't know who um, Vector Choice is, I want to introduce Vector Choice. Uh, we've made the Inc. 5000 two years in a row. Uh, the MSP 501, which is the top managed services providers in the world, uh, and uh, uh, the top 500 uh, two years in a row, best and brightest companies work for in the nation, and as well as Atlanta. Uh, little things that our clients say about us is that we're dependable. If you want VIP service when it comes to your managed services, your hosting services, um, and, and taking care of all your technology needs, we are the company for you. And a little bit of where we're located and our clients are located and who we take care of. So we have officially, as of last month, five locations. Uh, we just added Mobile, Alabama uh, to one of our locations um, with the other four that we have. Um, we service clients about 23 states currently. We've done work in Costa Rica, the UK, Netherlands, and Dominican Republic. And if you need compliancy from HIPAA to PCI to ITAR to SOX, we're the company for you. So I want to introduce my good friend, uh, Dave Collier. Uh, he is one of the partners of Atlanta Office Technology. So Dave, please introduce yourself. Yeah, thanks for having thanks. me, Will. I appreciate the, uh, the invite to join you here today. Um, yeah, so Atlanta Office Technologies, we're a, a, a copier dealer, uh, office equipment dealer based in Atlanta. Uh, we service clients all over the country. We have about 850 clients and support 4,500 plus devices in the field currently. We're a young company. We've just been in Atlanta uh, for about five years or almost well, six years in February of next year. So we've had a lot of growth, a tremendous team that we put together that um, you know, myself, this is the only business I've ever been in. And so we've, we've got a good team that's uh, from the, the back end and the support and the operations to a finance side to the frontline sales and how we're acquiring new clients and, and making sure that we're keeping them happy long term. So um, glad glad to be here today. You do. Well, thanks for having I uh, appreciate you coming on and, and great to have you. Uh, so if anybody has any questions, if you're on Facebook, please put the comments. And again, like Logan was saying, if you got any questions for us during the webinar, uh, you can do it in the chat or the Q&A and we will answer that at the end. So first, what I'm going to talk about is uh, computers and laptops. So when you you go to Best Buy, you buy a computer uh, from Best Buy or Fry's or, or Office Depot, 
uh, you you look at that computer and say, hey, that computer is going to cost me four to six hundred dollars, right? But then when you go to a professional in your business, you're paying you know sometimes eight hundred to a thousand dollars for a desktop, and sometimes twelve hundred to two thousand dollars for a laptop. And you're like, why is that so big of a difference? Well, th there's a huge difference in consumer grade and business grade. I don't care if it's Dell or IBM or, or Lenovo or whoever you buy from. It, even if you go to their website, I mean, this is a prime example. If you go to a, the Dell's website, they're going to say home and office. So they take you two different directions, even on their website. And, and that's a, re a reason why is because they know consumers are only going to purchase equipment that is affordable for a consumer. Businesses are going to uh, uh, going to purchase equipment that is powered and and intense, so the employees are getting their job done. And a big difference is consumer grade, like Windows 10. You're going to get Windows 10 Home Edition on consumer grade versus business grade. You're going to get Windows 10 Professional, which you need in a uh, secure um, business environment. But also even down to the hardware. If you even say, hey, this is an i7 processor and 16 gigs of RAM and a solid state hard drive. Well, the problem is even though it's all identical specs um, that you're looking at from what a business grade and a consumer grade is, the parts are made in different countries that are a lot cheaper. So I, I actually, it was one time I was actually in the uh, um, Austin, Texas airport. Uh, um, uh, Dell Computers is out of Austin. And I was in Austin airport and I was sitting beside a gentleman and his job worked for Dell. He worked for Dell. And his job was to go to different countries and evaluate the hardware, hard drives and memory and motherboards for the computers. And he was on the consumer side. And so I, I simply asked the question. I said, look, I, you know, I, I know this, but I want to hear it from the horse's mouth. Why is it so much cheaper to buy a consumer grade machine versus a business grade machine? He said, quite frankly, because we buy it cheaper, we get cheaper products from uh, countries that will make it a lot cheaper, which makes it a lot affordable for the consumer to buy. So that's why when we encourage you as your IT professional is to buy business grade machines, it's going to hold up longer, last longer. I get so many people say, you know, I hate Dell because every time I go to Best Buy or Fry's and I buy a Dell for $500, it's just after six months, it's, it's crap. It doesn't work for me. Well, and the first question I ask is, what model did you buy? If they buy it, bought a consumer grade, it's a totally different than if you buy like a Lenovo Dell, uh, not a Lenovo, a Latitude Dell laptop that's a business grade machine. So there is a difference regardless of what vendor you use. So I want to make sure when you are out there looking, you're talking to your IT provider or even talking to Vector Choice about your equipment, we're going to be quoting and most IT providers are going to quote you business grade devices and not consumer grade for your business. Um, also, I'm going to talk about networking. You know, firewalls are not the same. Wireless is not the same. So the wireless or modem or firewalls that you put in your home is not the same ones that you put in your business. For example, you might buy a little Netgear $140, $100 wireless access point for your home. Well, that's fine and dandy and that's affordable and it's a, a, it's a consumer grade but it's not all built the same. The security that's built into these devices are totally different than the, in the business grade um, uh, access, wireless access points and same as the firewalls and stuff. So, you know, firewalls can run you from $300 to $5,000. It all depends on what your need is. And that's why you really need to talk to your IT professional to find out what do I need? Don't strictly go on price because price will bite you when it comes to buying consumer grade for your business. So with all that being said, you know, today is really meant to talk about printers and what is, again, consumer and business grade uh, printers and why I have Dave on here today and to help answer these questions for us. Again, if you have any questions for him, please uh, feel free to add that to the chat there. But Dave, so let's talk about that. If, if I'm a consumer and I want to buy a printer, I go to Staples. But when, when's the fine line of determining a business should go to Staples to buy a printer versus uh, buying uh, a business grade uh, printers and copiers? Well, uh, I mean, that's a, uh, a good question and a good starting point for, for this conversation. Most, 
typically it comes down to a few things. Uh, it comes down to, to the amount of money you're spending, which a lot of those home, a lot of the devices you're gonna get from a home office store have a low price of entry, meaning to, to get the printer and take it home, it's very inexpensive, or take it, even take it and use it in your office as a, a home office device you're using in a commercial environment. What, what happens though is the, the consumable costs of, of running that device. And so the more volume you print, the more, the more that you're doing, the more business your business grows, typically the expense related to actually having that in your office or at your home office or your, your, your uh, business office will, will start to skyrocket. So there becomes a point where there's, where you're paying for service that you're not getting, you're paying for features that you're not getting. And so for most, you know, smaller businesses are just starting out or, or doing lower volume or do not doing a lot of printing that the a device from Staples um, or a home office store is going to be sufficient up until a certain point. Beyond that, you find opportunity where, where even spend isn't an issue because typically if you're, if you're, um, just for a, 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 a kind of standard run of the mill multifunction device from a, a staple store that copies and prints and scans. Once you get to the point where you're spending a thousand plus dollars a year on the printer or on consumables for that printer, whether it's ink or whether it's toner, then you're probably at a point where you, you may be worth, it may be worth looking at a commercial type solution for the features you get for, um, it's better aligned for the volume you're doing. A lot of the, the consumables like the toner and the ink and a smaller device, or they're not going to have as much capacity. So you're going to be spending time changing that or ordering that. Um, and and as, the, as you scale, so as you have multiple users that need printers and you just, you know, can continue to acquire these devices, it becomes more and more of a, of a headache and more and more of a job to make sure that you have all the the consumables for the different models that you bought over time, et cetera. And then when it comes to support, I mean, most of these devices have some kind of warranty with them, but it's not, it's not the same as you get from an office equipment dealer that where you're getting someone that's local, that's live, um, that's usually going to be out there same day, uh, as opposed to, you know, uh, where they might be shipping you a, a, a device to replace the existing one. And then you put that one back in the box and ship it back. Well, then you have downtime for those couple days, then the time you spent to get that device set up again. So there's, um, it gets to be a, it gets to be a lot of time and money that you spend both hard cost and soft cost. Yeah. You know, uh, I, I, I've, I've, over the years, I've spent a lot of money when it comes to toner and ink and, and cartridges. Um, and I, and even, I think years ago, the uh, HP CEO at the time uh, said, our money is not in the printer. It's in the consumables that you're using. Uh, that's where, and, and we all know that when we go buy the staples and have to buy that ink or toner, we, we feel the pain. So, um, so where does a, uh, for businesses that are doing mass printing, um, businesses that have multiple, the big machines that you, you know, that, that when I walk around um, at their office and they got these big machines setting in their office, where does a uh, service provider like you guys come in um, and what's the size client that makes sense doing a, a, I guess what I call fleet management or printer fleet management? Yeah. So, um, I mean, we work with our most frequent transaction is a client that might just have one office and one large MFP. Maybe they already have an existing large copier that they lease or that they have under a, a contract. Um, or they might be, they may currently just use home office type equipment and understand that they're either spending money for something they don't have um, and they don't have the support. But so that's where the conversation usually starts. Once you're, it's usually based on spend and, and time that you have to spend messing with it. But our most frequent clients that we work with already have something existing. So they've already made the decision and understood that, you know, the home office stuff isn't going to keep up with their, their pace of work and the amount that they're printing. And, um, you know, they're looking for areas to improve and cost reduction and service improvements. So. Yeah. And, and that's where a lot, a lot of, uh, you know, companies, us being the IT for companies, they look at us and say, well, you're I, IT, so what printer should we get? And, you know, and of course, we, we got a, a somewhat idea, but we're not experts in printers. Um, just like, you know, because it's connected to the network and they use a computer to print to it, they think it's part of IT. And I think this is where our worlds meet is that 
you guys are specialized in that repair of the uh, printer itself, the the drums, the drivers, the uh, all the working mechanics in there, and really all all from a networking or IT standpoint, we're worried about uh, can you put an IP address on it and can your machine print to it. Other than that, we really have no control or really understanding of printers and the inner workings of printers. Right. Yeah. It's important now more than it was 15 years ago to have a good working relationship with either the internal IT or the third party IT to make sure that you're you're after the same target, which is keeping your customer up. Um, you know, 20, 15, 20 years ago, you could take someone that had mechanical skills and can turn a wrench on a car, teach them the process of how to work on a copier and they'd be good. Now you have to make sure that your technicians have training on IT so you troubleshoot you know, whether it's an IT a connectivity issue or whether it's a machine failure issue and making sure that that doesn't come off to the client as pointing fingers and it looks like, hey, you're trying to work together and make sure that they're able to get back to their business. Copiers and printers in general, typically the bane of, of IT's existence or whoever owns that decision for a client, um, you know, they want to make sure that that it's something that everybody touches. So they don't want to hear about it. They, and they want to make sure that if they do make a change, that it's going to be a safe choice and yep. that it's going to be a smooth transition and that everything's going to work seamlessly and, and go like it's like you say it's going to go. So what are, you know, I, I know the story, but I wanted you to share this on your perspective is what are the biggest things that you run into a customer buys a printer from you? And I know, I know the answers to this, but I want to hear you say it is what what do you guys run into that they didn't tell the IT or they don't have something in place um, when they, they just want to put that printer over there in the, that new corner? <laughs> well, they don't understand, you know, to make sure it has an IP address, what drivers are going to need loaded, how scanning is going to set up, what kind of security they need in place for the scanning that they're going to do. Is it going to be scanned to email? Is it going to be scanned to a folder? Is there authentication that needs to be required? Um, because now this is on the network, it's a, it's a, it's a piece that needs to be secured as well. It's an entry point for, for hackers to get in, which I know you have some stories where, you know, of similar devices that weren't historically a network device, but now are, and, you know, hackers find their way in and, and, and cause damage. So. Yep. Absolutely. And some of the, and one of the things that, uh, you didn't point out, but you, you had some good ones there is. Make sure you have a Ethernet cable um, <laughs> in the wall wherever you want to put that printer and power. Uh, yeah, uh, power. We, have, we, we have seen it all where, uh, you know, we will get a phone call. Hey, we bought a printer and it's in this corner and we need you to hook it up. We don't know who the printer, you know, company that they bought it from. We get there. There's no power, no Ethernet uh, where they want to put the printer. Um, and they haven't given the, the printer company any IP addresses or anything. Right. So make sure you involve your IT and your printer company together. Uh, they can make uh, make it go very smooth for you, especially if you're doing print to email or 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 uh, um, excuse me, copy to email or uh, or scan to email, scan to folder, because you've got to have security permissions to get there. And most importantly, because it is a device on the network, make sure you change that default password um, uh, uh, because. Uh, if it's a default password and, and a hacker gets in, they can use that device to get to the rest of your network and everything. And a lot of people don't think about printers or or uh, smart home, even even at home, smart home devices able to hack through uh, that type of stuff. So, um, so if if a, 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 when a customer comes to you and say, "Hey, I can get the same printer um, at Best Buy that you quoted me." Yeah. Um, how do you handle that? And, and how's that conversation, uh, the pros and cons of just going buy a printer yourself versus working with a uh, printer company like yourself? Yeah, well, most of the printers that we sell on a smaller desktop device, which is part of what we do. So, you know, of the thousands of devices we support, probably 40% of them are actually desktop printers, I mean, maybe a multifunction. And the other half or whatever, 60% are traditional copiers, the big things that sit on the floor. Um, but so the equipment that we're selling from a, a printer perspective and that we're putting out in the field and supporting is not typically stuff that you're going to buy at a, at a home office type store. It's like you alluded to earlier, HP and all the, the printer manufacturers that are that are after the home office. It's the Gillette marketing theory. They're giving you the razor, the, the, the nice heavy you know, handle 
at Gillette, but then you pay $30 every time you need to buy six blades. That's, that's why I don't shave. That's, <laughs> <laughs> um, that's the that's the same way that the, the the printer world, especially in the home office. So our equipment's a little bit more expensive, but it runs more efficient. And so that's where it comes in when you're doing amount of volume. There's a break even point where you know, and most of the devices that the clients put in from us are under a, a lease or a contract where you're not spending the cash immediately. It's just taking looking at operating expenses today for how you manage desktop printers or copiers. And then trying to put together a solution that gives you gives you more automation. You're spending less time with it, and hopefully we can save you some money along that way too. And so it's you know it's a win win for everybody. And now you have somebody supporting it, where you have a whole team from your IT to your your copier and printer vendor, um, where you don't have you know the expense of internal employees, whether there's our IT employees or someone else in administration that's wasting their time managing printer consumables and yep. that sort of thing so 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 and you, you mentioned lease a lot and 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 everything so tell me if, if a customer comes to you guys says i want one of the big printers that's on the floor i need multi-function i need to be able to fax scan copy i need to print so many pages per minute um you know uh, and this is how many pages i'm printing um you know not talking about numbers because obviously every situation is different but the leasing portion of it, what is covered? Um, you, you mentioned consumables. You don't have to worry about that. So what is covered in that sort of package that you guys offer? So typically, and, and this, this is across the board, this isn't necessarily just us, but a, a, the, the, there's two parts of having a device in your office. There's typically a, a lease portion of it, and then there's a service agreement that goes along with it. And within that service agreement, it's typically based on the amount of volume you run. So if you're running 10,000 pages or 100,000 pages, um, you know, the amount that you're going to spend is going to be different. The type of technology you're going to need is going to be different. But within that service agreement, it includes all the tone or all the parts, everything that basically it's easier to say what it excludes and what it doesn't. So typically those service agreements include everything it takes to make that thing work, um, except for paper and staples. But um, so that that's and and even from a desktop side nowadays, a lot of the technology can report back to to the service provider us. And so when uh, consumables get low, the supplies, the toner comes out automatically, uh, typically before the end user even realizes that it's getting low. And so it's, you know, it's a just in time plus some. Um, yep. You, you guys, you guys, just like we monitor networking equipment and performance of computers, you guys are monitoring that printer uh, uh, consumption. And so you know when to ship out uh, uh, those that toner or cartridge or whatever. Right. Okay. And then and I'm assuming you guys do maintenance on it as well. So uh, do you guys do periodically maintenance? And then if something does break, what's the turnaround time for uh, providers like you to come out and fix that issue? Yeah. So typically, when a call gets placed by a by a client, you're going to get a call back from a service technician within an hour to let you know that they received the call. Uh, and give you an ETA when they're going to be on site, or you're targeting a four hour response time in our business. So you should expect a call in the morning and see someone in the afternoon, call in the afternoon and see someone in the morning, just for a regular routine, you know, um, issue. And so that comes into play too with the, the home office, the smaller side, where if you don't have a service agreement, if there's some, you know, a line on the page that you're printing or something like that, a lot of times you're just going to either live with it or you're going out and paying retail for a whole new consumable to try to solve this problem where it may be something different. And, you know, depending on your level of, of how you view it, but whatever's getting sent out with your logo on it is some kind of representation of you, whether you're a small company or a big company, you want it to look good, whether it's your invoice or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, and and so, it might be a driver. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So. So, so it's not always the physical, uh, I'm knowing from the IT side, it's not always the physical aspect. It's sometimes, it, I would say most of our issues are drivers related. <laughs> so um, the, you know, when a customer is determining the best solution for them, um, and, and, and I think I'll add this to it as well. If someone is against leasing, they don't like leasing anything from cars to anything, they'd rather pay cash from a CapEx standpoint, 
do you guys still do that with the relationship of a service for, uh, service support on that? Yes. Okay. So, I mean, I mean 95% of, of clients lease equipment in our side, we're not necessarily pushing one way or another. Usually, usually the, whoever's involved in that decision has a pretty strong idea of how they, you typically like to um, yeah. acquire technology. And it, it depends on the size of the business you are as well. And you know, how much growth you're going to have uh, from a volume from a print volume perspective, from an employee use perspective. So you'll find some, you know, typically when, when somebody purchases equipment, typically it's a, a smaller uh, client, you know, maybe with one, just one office where they, the, the users that are using it are very static. So you, you, they understand that, Hey, we purchased this thing, let's take care of it. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's the kind of thing, if you had two Camaros that you bought, do you want the one that your whole family drove or the one that you just drove after four or five mm -hmm. years? Well, you know, one's going to look in better shape. So, and, and the speed of technology and security and all this stuff that comes up, there's not, a, if you do purchase something, getting rid of that, it's, there's not a, there's not a market for used printers and used copiers to the same level there is for cars. So, um, you know, a lot of, a lot of people just prefer to use their cash for, for, um, for things they're going to appreciate and, you know, lease things that are going to be, they're going to depreciate, they're going to be used and you're going to have a simpler process and a simpler mindset when you want to change out of it. So sure. um, that's what, the what it, transactions we do are, are leased, but it doesn't necessarily matter to us. Um, so what, what is the typical lease period on a printer? And do they get options or is there a typical time frame? Yeah, I mean, the, the most frequent are three, four and five year terms. The, mo the most overwhelming, um, the most frequent is, is a four or five year lease. So, um, and usually there's like, we have some programs that are built in where there's options where once they get 60, 70% of the way through that existing agreement where we can upgrade them to newer equipment. And then they get the ability to have a lower cost, a lower payment every single month, but the still the flexibility to upgrade that equipment once you get further down the road and needs might change. So, sure. sure. So, how how are you guys uh, dealing with the work from home? Now, so many companies today are, you know, I, with COVID, uh, started the work from home, and and now people are actually buying in on that. And in some cases, how are you guys addressing the printer uh, piece of it uh, from work from home? It's we were built to to support it in the same manner. Um, you know, there are some there are some ad additional roadblocks and communications you need to make sure you have. Because then you're you're going from a um, typically more uh, consistent network in an office environment when you're talking about you know at home printers to home Wi-Fi and and how that how that connectivity is going to work and all that setup work. Um, but you know from a from a standpoint of shipping supplies and providing on-site service, you know that that's not a that's not really any different. It's just maybe more physical addresses that you're you're going to. But you do see, you know, we have had some clients have said, hey, for the time being, we think we're probably going to try to stay, stay home. So, you know, we did have, we did have, you know, these six or eight large MFPs, copiers in, in our office. Now we have these 20, 25 users that are really more power users. They need something much better than they can get at a Staples because of the volume they're going to do. And we want to have the support, et cetera, et cetera, we've talked about before. Um, so we've had some clients that have reached out to us with that. Um, not an overwhelming number of those, uh, because I think a lot of people are trying to see kind of what what pans out, and you know maybe there's some some uh, some light at the end of the tunnel where people will be coming back and and have that and won't have to make changes like that that are permanent. Yeah. Um, but and, and that's I'm, kind of from a flexibility perspective. That's where the the contract that they were in it allowed them just to you know it made sense to do something as opposed to just having these you know, large systems that they're paying money for to sit in their office collecting dust. Um, yeah. They moved it to a system they were actually could use the, 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 the resources they were spending money for. Okay. So, and, and I'm, I'm assuming like uh, just knowing my clients, uh, uh, legal, healthcare, um, uh, mortgage companies, closing attorneys um, that do a lot of printing or, or key type of clients that uh, you talk to. But I'm assuming pretty much anybody that's with the office that needs a, a higher volume of printing uh, or a large device is still someone that you do business with, right? Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. 
All right. We used to say everything but uh, nail salons and gas stations. Everybody <laughs> else has something, and it you know whether it's. You know, I've never, I've never, I've never. I've never thought about it, but yeah, nail salons and gas stations don't print much. <laughs> so fair, fair enough. I have never thought I'll have to use that for IT as well because we don't we don't do nail salons or gas stations either. <laughs> so, um, well, uh, Dave, I appreciate it. Uh, you know, uh, Logan, is there any questions that have come in? And, and again, uh, anybody that does have additional questions, feel free uh, uh, to ask. Uh, we do have a couple. Um, is there a big difference between the brands? That's a good question. It, it part of it kind of depends on what your applications are. So what the, um, you know, what you're printing, what you're scanning. We didn't talk about it much here, but a lot of these technology um, has has scanning and, and workflow automation that can be tied to it that can take paper intensive processes and move them to a more digital format, either for archiving or just for internal movement of documents, whether that's an order, whether that's a sales order, um, packing slips, that kind of thing. Um, for the most part, I mean, most 20, 30 years ago, there was a big difference between the brand. Um, nowadays, most of what one can do, another brand can do. Maybe it's a, you know, the buttons on the left versus the button on the right. It's all around. It's the bigger thing is really the service provider that's going to provide the service. Either it, it, that comes down to how it's implemented. Um, and then more importantly, how it's supported, not just year one, year two, but like I mentioned, the most contracts are four or five years long. So how is it going to work once it's, you know, it's, it's been around the, been around the block a few times. Um, and are you going to be able to fix it? Are you going to go fix it the first time? Um, or is this going to become a, 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 uh, inefficient part of my office? So the provider is really most important at this point, yep. not as much the technology for the majority of of clients that that we work with and i, and I think uh, there, there are some other questions before logan um, brings that in it made me think because we've got clients uh in all my different offices on this call um your footprint of covering north carolina and, and south carolina and virginia and, and, and baton rouge louisiana and stuff and georgia how, how's your how do you handle that yeah. So that's an important um, question, you know, whether you, you talk to us or somebody else is understanding how that works. You don't, you, um, we have access to support clients all over the country um, and, and most do. So there's whatever manufacturers that you sell, there's a dealer network across the country. Just like if you bought Ford Fusions for all your technicians, you know, there's a Ford store within, you know, a couple hours of, of everywhere you want to be in, in the country. The same thing works in our world. We have a network of dealers we work with. Um, so the that's not necessarily something that's unique to AOT, but having the team and internal staff that know that can manage that is important because, you know, if you think about it, if you've got, we, our biggest client has 200 locations and like two, three or four devices in every single location. Um, so coordinating that is and doing it in an efficient manner, because usually when you make a decision on, hey, this is the process we're going to move forward with, we want to get it deployed quickly. The customer wants to get it deployed quickly. So making sure you have staff flexibility and a, a track record of doing that um, is different than just having access to doing it. So, um, yes, we can support anywhere all over the country. We have clients that 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 aren't that don't have a presence in Georgia at all. Okay. Um, but, Okay. All right. Logan, anything else? Um, I think you've already answered this, Dave, but the last question we have is how long is a normal lease for a printer or a copier? Got it. Yeah. I mean, really you can pick whatever number, whatever number you want, you know, however many months you want, it just comes down to, to you know, how much you want to spend. Typically, if you're going to look at anything shorter than three years, it's, it is just better to purchase it. Um, but like I said, most people aren't doing that. Most are doing a, uh, a four or five, three, four or five year, year term. Um, the shorter term is typically if you're doing more volume, you're more, um, you see more changes, you expect more changes in technology. Um, you have more users that use it typically then, you know, you may lean towards a shorter term as opposed to if, you know, volume is maybe lower, you're not pushing the threshold of, of what the devices want to do on a monthly, monthly basis. Um, then, then a, that a longer term is is typically. And, and Dave, and Dave, on the, on the leases, are they dollar buyouts or uh, or what, how are they structured uh, from a buyout standpoint? 
they can be either way, fair market value or dollar buyout. The the vast majority, if you're leasing it, you're wanting, you're understanding that that you're going to use it beyond typically its its useful life. Then you're going to want something new. You're not going to want to keep it and put it somewhere. Um, yeah. And typically, it's actually better it, the the way the rates kind of work out. Even if you just did an FMV and value lease and then just bought it at the end, you probably save the money and then have the flexibility. You didn't just commit to the extra payments, extra you know payment to have the ability to own it from day one. Make sure that you want to own it at the end of the three or four or five year term. So okay, all right. Well, Dave, I appreciate it. Thank you so much for coming on today. Um, if you guys have any questions about this or any consumer grade uh, devices from business um, and would like to get in contact with Dave, reach out to me directly. I'll introduce you to Dave directly and, uh, and we'll go from there. He can do evaluations just like we do uh, IT and security network evaluations for companies. He can do evaluation of your printer uh, environment how many pages you're printing and give you an idea of uh, what is uh, the best fit for you, copier printers and, and everything, uh, the best direction for you to go. So Dave, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. And uh, everybody on Facebook and the webinar, thank you for joining and you guys have a wonderful rest of the day. Thank you, Will. Thanks, Dave.